Hello and welcome to Moment of Truth on Labour Social. I'm Graham Hughes. For those of you old enough to remember, post-Brexit trade deals were a huge talking point of the Three Blokes in a Pub series. Mostly due to the fact that any trade deal we got anywhere in the world would not be as good as the ones we could get while we were still in the EU. Something that could be easily demonstrated by the mere fact that 68 million potential customers is a lot less than 500 million potential customers. Now, I know trade deals aren't particularly sexy, but I've had a thought that I'd like to share with you. The other day, I posted a video talking about this new UK-India free trade deal in which I suggest that Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has an incredibly large vested interest in this particular deal, as he and his wife own £500 million worth of shares in Infosys, the Indian tech giant founded by Sunak's father-in-law, an international megacorp that is still trading with Russia. So as things stand, the British Prime Minister is currently making a killing out of a company that is openly and defiantly trading with a country that Britain is, for all intents and purposes, at war with. But today I want to look at another possible conflict of interest for little Vichy. That interest being Brexit. Elected in 2015, Rishi Sunak was one of the original Brexiters. 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 He's he's not like Liz Truss or Theresa May, who both campaigned to remain. He's not even like Boris Johnson, who famously wrote two op-ed pieces, one saying that we should stay in the EU and the other one saying that we should leave. Johnson's fateful decision, by the way, to join the swivel-eyed loons of UKIP in calling for us to impose economic sanctions on ourselves was only made after dinner with the son of a KGB agent. The same son of a KGB agent who invited him to at least one exclusive cocaine and hookers party in Italy and is now, utterly disgracefully, an unelected legislator for life in our House of Lords. No, Rishi Sunak wanted us out of the EU from the start, and I think there's a reason for that. Actually, I think there's 500 million reasons for that. One of the things that happened back in 2016 was that there was an EU-India trade deal that had got to quite an advanced stage, but the deal was being held up by the UK. There were two major sticking points as far as the UK was concerned. I've covered these before. First of all, India's sky-high tariffs on Scotch whiskey, and secondly, how many visas will be given to Indian people to allow them to work in the EU. If you look at this from the point of view of someone who has untold millions worth of pounds, millions of pounds worth of shares in one of the biggest companies in India, the cleaving off from the EU of the UK makes perfect sense. Without the UK threatening to use their veto powers, a deal with the EU that concentrated on services and didn't have to worry about keeping Scottish distilleries or English racists happy would be a better deal for India. On the other side of the coin, the devastating financial hit the UK would take from Brexit as we cheerfully impose massive economic sanctions on ourselves would also benefit Indian companies wanting a free trade deal as Britain alone, broken off from the European Union, would have a much weaker hand in any future negotiations, representing only 68 million potential customers rather than 500 million. And the UK being, let's face it, desperate, there's only a handful of countries or trade blocks in the world worth a pan of scouse, and India is one of them. So for someone with £500 million worth of shares in one of India's biggest companies, it made perfect sense for Rishi Sunak to encourage every racist in the nation to vote to make the good people of India a bit richer, and Sunak himself a lot richer. Would you like to call it reparations? Let's call it reparations. Brexit be like proper woke. Bet you didn't see that coming. Now, there's a new trade deal going ahead between the EU and India in which Scotch whiskey is no longer a sticking point because Scotland is no longer in the EU. Also, visas would be less of an issue because the EU doesn't have to keep the UK's frothing gangams at bay. But then there's this. The UK's desperation for a trade deal with India is directly proportional to just how much our economy is failing. The UK economy has not grown at all in real terms since 2007. 16 years ago. The more desperate we are, the better the deal will be for India. The better the deal is for India, the more money emphasis will make, the more money emphasis makes, the more money the Prime Minister of Brexit Britain makes. There is no getting away from this. The British Prime Minister has a vested interest 
in the UK's economy failing, which is possibly why under his reign as Chancellor and then as PM, we've seen government debt rise to 98.5% of GDP. We saw Sunak failing to insure against interest rate rises, costing the British taxpayer £11 billion, and why interest rates and inflation are both currently out of control. What happens to the British pounds means little to what happens to the British pound means little to a man whose main source of income comes from sources other than, you know, the British pound. In short, while the EU is currently negotiating a free trade deal with India from a point of strength, the UK is negotiating from a point of desperation. We've already seen how the trade deal we got with India and the trade deal we got with the Trans-Pacific Partnership aren't worth a pan of scouse. We're talking pennies on the dollar, as they say, when compared with how much trade and economic growth we have lost by leaving the EU. The weaker the UK economy is, the more over a barrel India have us. And what we will no doubt end up signing will be a great deal for India, but would be a relatively but, be, but will be relatively useless for us and the better end of the bargain that india gets the more it personally benefits our prime minister and his family that's what you've got to understand that's why he supported brexit that's probably why he went into politics in the first place it was all to do with accruing more personal wealth. He's already one of the richest people in Britain. After this deal is signed by his Brexit government, he might soon become one of the richest people in the world. Meanwhile, the UK is falling apart in more ways than I have time to list in this video. I've got to say though, there is some dark humour to be derived from the fact that every racist in Britain was convinced to vote for something that would make them poorer and make the good people of India richer. Bet they weren't expecting that, but Sunak was.